There was a big discussion about Aura lately in Street Fighter. And I think this is something that I always find really fascinating. People always talk about this with regards to character strength. The idea of characters who are really, really, really strong one-shot characters. And I don't mean that isn't just like a generic high damage character, right? Or a character who is like really well-rounded and then can also rob you. The archetype of, of one-shot characters I'm referring to are characters who, for the most part, right, are not that strong outside of their potential to one-shot you. This is a pretty common archetype. They're not really that good in a lot of scenarios, but if they hit you, they do have a strong chance to one-chance you all the time. Think about a character like Gold Lewis, or think about a character like Potemkin, who is going to have losing neutral or losing matchups quite common. However, they always have the potential of like, well, if Potemkin hits Axel one time, it could just be over, even in like the matchups that are not good for him. Now, compare how often those characters get those potential moments to Leo. You just start to see like, well, this character can one shot you, but they don't have the tools to make it happen. Gold Lewis might get in, Leo will get in. Naga will Beyblade and you'll block it once and you have to guess. So like, how good is this character? How do you classify how strong a one-shot character is? Do you just like do the math and be like, okay, well, most of the time they're not gonna do it. They lose this position, they lose that position. So it's just not good. Or do you say like, well, if they're always right and they make it in, it could always happen. They think Oro is not that good. He doesn't have great neutral or he doesn't have the best like specials or normals or anything. He can just hit you and do 70% with V-Trigger and a lot of meter, right? So you're like, okay, Oro cannot be that bad, right? He does 70% if he hits you. Yeah, sure, his neutral and like his specials and all this stuff is kind of whack, but like if he hits you once, you die. You know, it's such an interesting character archetype to think about because they are very hard to rank because you really have to consider their one-shot power versus all of the other places on the screen that they exist in and try to weigh them. How does this weigh out and even out or tip one way or another in the scale is like a really important question. Particularly, I think consistency is one of the most important factors with characters, archetypes like that, right? How is the character's neutral or options to land that one chance potential, right? Does it cost a lot of meter and resources? Is it hard to do? Like, is it hard to consistently find that hit? Does it have to be a specific hit or is it like any hit they can just hit you and then do it is the character like capable oh, outside of the one shot or are they just gonna get smoked all the time do they find themselves often in the position to do this or is it like very rare even if they have lots of losing matchups or they're not overall that strong like people tend to overreact and overreate the one chance potential of some characters and i think oro is like naturally the kind of character that people are not gonna be happy to die too. Does that make sense? That kind of like feeling that you're consistently winning and then Almost die. Like that is a very common thing that makes people grumpy. I'm of the opinion that like if the character is capable of robbing you, but they're pretty bad everywhere else, I don't really hold them in that high of regard. You have to look at them overall as characters rather than just like, oh, they hit you and you died. It's really hard to do that. People are so commonly focused on the now and like winning right now today. Today, I must win. I must win this match, this round that's happening right now. I think that's why so many people were so down about character, a character like Kai in the beginning of the game. He has gotten changes that are good. Don't get me wrong. But like characters that are built around controlling the game are not easy to play at the beginning of the game they take time to figure out characters that you can just like hammer some shit in and just do this good thing and then win or like characters who would just have really strong things that force your opponent to deal with it all the time people are going to figure them out quicker uh, quicker characters that rely on really strong game knowledge and like understanding how to challenge or not challenge or position in every scenario gonna take more time to shine and like i think a lot of people are just like oh this character dies because I made a mistake. This character is, sucks. He must be bad. Like, stability is such an important factor in characters. I've been thinking about talking about the characters in Strive currently. I think it's really interesting. I think it's hard to rate them. It really does feel better, this this version. There's a few characters that are maybe still, they could use a bit of love, but, you know. Hitachi, who are the top five characters? Break it down for me. Happy Chaos, Nagoro Yuki, Soul, Leo, Zato. Damn. No Ram either? Damn, that's beast. May is so funny because I feel like there was like that time period where like EU was like May is the best character that she wins every matchup. They were like so hype about that character and how good she was and stuff. And I never really thought she was the I don't know if there was a version or I ever thought she was even like the best character. I feel like I asked people why and it was always just her damage. I think she's a really strong character. 
but I thought that was kind of ham. I was like, damn, the strongest character? I mean, matchups are important. It's funny. I always forget that Street Fighter players are living, they live in their own world. They're like, yeah, Street Fighter is a matchup game. You know, like it doesn't matter how good or bad a character is. It's really about the matchup. And I'm like, you motherfuckers don't play anything. That's like every fighting game on the planet. Even games with like assists and stuff, like that matters into the matchup. Tekken has more homogenized moves than some other games in that sense, right? But even in Tekken, she's like the only character besides Master Raven in the game that cannot punish his down four. That's an pretty important thing. These are exceptions. No, it's just an example. Like if a character really relies on some move that is weak to sidestep, if a character has a better or worse sidestep, that's like a matchup specific thing too. It's not like the matchups don't matter.